to today's webinar on building inferential comprehension skills. This is our first ever webinar, so we're very excited to do this presentation, which is great timing as these skills are a core of the upcoming NAPLAN next month. We're lucky enough to have as our presenter Jane Coy, an experienced primary school teacher and consultant. Jane is the author of a number of educational resources for Educational Services Australia and other publishers. This webinar will run for about 20 minutes of content, followed by 10 minutes of questions and answers. We encourage you to ask questions throughout the webinar using the question text box to the right hand side of your screen. We'll then get to these at the end. So without any further ado, welcome Jane. Thanks Richard. So teaching inferential comprehension skills. We all know how important it is, but also understand how difficult it can be. Moving from literal comprehension, where the answers and understandings are plain to see, to inferring what is going on beyond the literal meaning of the text can be a difficult concept for students to grasp. The new Australian curriculum specifically makes reference to teaching inferential comprehension skills as an integral component of a student's literacy acquisition from as early as year one. In addition to this, the nationwide NAPLAN tests include specific questions related to inferential comprehension. In this session, the following key inferential comprehension skills will be explored. Finding the main idea in the text, recognising cause and effect, connecting and interpreting ideas, distinguishing fact from opinion, identifying a sequence of events, and inferring the author's feelings about the text. We will look at what each one actually means and why it is an important skill. You'll then be provided with some practical focus activities for each skill to use in your classroom. Let's look at the first one, finding the main idea. Finding the main idea means identifying the most important message in a text. This skill helps improve students' understandings of why the text was written and what it is mainly about. The main idea can be determined in different ways according to the text type. So let's look at imaginary text first. In imaginary text, the main idea is usually the moral or life lesson that's evident from the story. It's rarely directly stated and needs to be inferred by the reader. These activities can help you study the main idea. You could get the children to discuss the general plot of some well-known fairy tales, explaining that the main idea in these stories is usually an important life lesson learned from the story. For example, Cinderella and Snow White We've got the main idea as good triumphing over evil. Some other examples could be Little Red Riding Hood, uh, such as Don't Talk to Strangers or The Three Little Pigs, where hard work pays off. Students are very familiar with these stories and can quite often easily determine what the main idea is. And they can then categorize the stories according to a similar main idea. Another activity is to make a list of popular movies or books and group students according to who has seen or read each one. The groups could discuss what they think the main idea of the story is by asking, what life lesson can I learn from this story? You could use popular examples to get them started. For example, something most of them have probably seen, Toy Story, the main idea is success is achieved through teamwork, or another great one is Shrek, uh, it's what's on the inside that counts. Groups could share their findings with the class. Another activity for imaginative texts is that students could browse the blurbs of a variety of books and see if they can predict what the main idea of the story might be. After reading the book, they could determine if their prediction was accurate. We could look now at informative and persuasive texts. Often finding the main idea in these text types can be simpler because often it's, because often it's stated in the title, the first sentence or the last sentence. An activity idea could be to access some simply written information text, identify the way in which the main idea of the information text is enriched by a series of supporting details. Supporting details allow us to learn more about the main idea and can help the writer to express opinions or share content with the reader in greater depth. You could discuss how supporting details are explicit for the reader, whereas inferred meanings require the reader to gather their own ideas or to read between the lines. So an example of a book that I actually have seen is one on dinosaurs. We've got the main idea that dinosaurs had many differences and the supporting details discuss how they were different, how they walked, how they ate and how they moved. 
Another ex example could be to ask students to write about someone they admire. They could start by writing the main idea of the text in the title. For example, use a person's name and saying that they're a great singer or a great parent or teacher, footballer, cook, etc. Then describe why by using supporting details. An example of uh, this activity for persuasive texts would be to use a selection of brochures from local attractions in your area. Uh, get the students to identify the main idea of that the information is trying to convey to the reader. For example, a pamphlet on a bowling alley could be come to this bowling alley and you will have lots of fun. Or for a sporting establishment, play tennis with us to help you get fit. And you could ask the students to try and determine what the main idea of this text is. We'll move now to recognising cause and effect. Recognising cause and effect means identifying how a certain action or event can cause something else to happen. It's an important skill because it helps students to better understand why certain reactions or outcomes occur. Some suggested activities for cause and effect could be that you could discuss how cause and effect is all around us as actions and reactions in our own lives. An example you could use with the children could be that you hurt your little brother, that's the action, and you get punished, that's the reaction. Use the school or classroom rules to determine the possible effects if a particular rule is broken. Another activity could be to use Aboriginal Dreamtime stories to explore how the plot uses cause and effect to explain how things came to be. An example could be the story How the Kangaroo Got Its Tail, uh, where Wombat threw a spear at Kangaroo, which is the cause, and it ultimately turned into a tail, which is the effect. Further activity could be in small groups. Students use a general topic to identify cause and effect. Some examples could be the weather, it rains, which is a cause, plants get watered effect, and they could make lists of these. Another example of a topic could be human instinct, a baby cries, cause, it gets picked up and cuddled or fed effect. Uh, another example could be in the animal kingdom, an example could be an echidna feels threatened, which is the cause, and it rolls into a tight ball effect. Another example could be how to discuss how persuasive texts often use cause and effect to support an opinion. An example of this is a persuasive text about living a healthy life could use the argument that eating too much junk food for a long time, which is the cause, can ultimately make you unhealthy, which is the effect. These ideas can be displayed on a mind map to help the children plan their persuasive text. So on, in the mind map, the cause would be in the center, eating too much junk food for a long time, and then you would just put bubbles around that with the effects that comes from that particular cause. The next activity could be to discuss how a cause can have positive or negative effects. You could use simple relevant cause topics and use a fishbone diagram to represent the information visually. Some topic examples could be choosing to ride a bike to school, schools having a compulsory uniform, or another one could be letting children under 12 have mobile phones. You could uh, demonstrate it on, the, uh, uh, on a poster first, putting the cause as the head of the fish, and then the skeleton of the fish is the positive on the top and negative effects on the bottom. A further example of cause and effect activity could be to design an hourglass chart. You could use a selected natural disaster as a central topic. So the central topic is in this example bushfires. So you could talk about the causes of bushfires, lightning, drought, etc. And then you could talk about how bushfires then have their own causes and effects that follow on from that. So the effects of that bushfire could be houses burning down or destroying the landscape, etc. The next skill we'll look at is connecting ideas. Connecting ideas means to link related pieces of information in a text together. The information may be presented as words, illustrations, pictures or diagrams. It's an important skill because it gives students a clearer understanding of the overall meaning of the text. So some activities for looking at connecting ideas could be to display some unfinished dot-to-dot -dot puzzles around the classroom and ask the students to predict what the picture might be and try and choose ones that they can't easily see. 
the students then complete the puzzles and you could compare this activity to connecting ideas in a text where related pieces of information are linked together in order to give us a clearer picture of what the text is about. Another activity for connecting ideas could be to explore the different feelings that a central character in a text experiences in the stories that they're reading. The students can link these feelings to certain events in the story to explain why the character is feeling a certain way. For example, a character, Tom, was worried when it started raining heavily because his house was flooded last year. So they could just make connections between what something that happened earlier in the text. Another activity for connecting ideas could be that they create a character connection chart. The name of the main character is written in the centre circle and the names of other characters are written in the outer circles along with a description of the relationship between the two characters in the story. So of course the out number of outside circles will vary depending on the number of characters. Students could also study and create diagrams that link written details to information that's represented visually. For example, an animal life cycle, a system of the human body, the water cycle, pulley and lever systems, or the layers of a rainforest. So we'll move into interpreting ideas. Interpreting ideas requires students to draw on their own understandings and life experiences to gain insight into what's behind the literal meaning of a text. It's an important skill because it enables them to understand the subtext of the writing. An example of an activity could be to discuss how facial expressions and body language demonstrate how someone is feeling without anything actually being said. So in pairs, students could take turns role-playing different emotions while their partner tries to interpret how they are feeling. You could then relate this to how sometimes things are happening in a text that are not actually stated. Another example of an activity could be to explore how the use of music helps us interpret what is going on in a movie. Play scenes from popular movies with the sound turned down and with different music playing to see how it affects our interpretation of what is happening in the scene. So for example, you could play sorrowful music in a high adventure scene and then allow students to present their own examples of this. Another activity could be to use figurative language sayings to discuss how interpreting ideas means making meaning from text but not in a literal way. You could create blank strips to explore this concept and use sayings such as I felt a weight lift off my shoulders, I had egg on my face and the students could write the figurative language saying in the first box then draw the actual literal meaning and then write the actual meaning of the saying. Another activity you could create uh, something similar to this but using proverbs for example the grass is always greener on the other side, the early bird gets the worm where the children can draw the literal meaning and I'm sure they'll have fun doing that and then write what it actually does mean. Another final activity for interpreting ideas is to use jokes. It's a fun way to teach interpretive language and you could pre-select some jokes that need interpreting of ideas to get the joke. For example, why don't dogs make good dancers? Because they have two left feet. Students need to know that two left feet is a saying used to describe someone who can't dance. So you could ask students to locate some of their own examples of these types of jokes. Moving on now to distinguishing fact from opinion. Distinguishing fact from opinion means identifying the difference between something that is real and true, a fact, as opposed to something that is somebody's thoughts or ideas on a topic, an opinion. It's an important skill because it helps students filter information about what is known to be true in contrast to what is believed to be true. So an example of an activity to help teach uh, distinguishing fact from opinion could be to ask students to describe a variety of general topics using a data grid by recording their responses as either facts or opinions. So for example, the topic is snakes. So in one column you could put facts about snakes, for example they lay eggs, have scaly bodies, etc. And on the other side they could write opinions about snakes, they're slimy, make great pets, they're scary, etc. Another activity could be to browse through a variety of magazine advertisements, classify the wording the advertisers use as facts or opinions about the product and talk about how they are trying to persuade the buyer to buy their product. Another activity could be to display a large poster divided into two sections with the headings facts and opinions. 
The students could use different coloured sticky notes to distinguish between facts and opinions on a certain topic. An example could be sport. So playing sport gives you exercise as a fact. It is fun playing sport could be an opinion. A final activity for distinguishing fact from opinion could be that the students write about a given topic using their opinion only. For example, the topic is cats. Cats make wonderful pets. They are so cuddly and look so cute when they lick their paws. So the students could share then what they've written and then discuss as a group how it feels to listen to a text when it's solely based on one person's opinion. We'll move on to identifying a sequence of events. Sequencing events means identifying the components of a text in the order that they happen. It's an important skill because it allows readers a means of integrating a text's individual parts to create an overall framework. Some suggested activities for this could be that they create timelines of their own lives indicating the major events that have occurred, their birth, starting school, birth of their siblings or major family holidays, etc. Or perhaps as an activity, they could, you could ask the students to record what they did during a, lunch a lunchtime break at school. You could encourage the use of words that show sequence such as first, then, after that, etc. to order the events. Another example of an activity could be to give the students jumbled steps to a familiar routine. For example, making a sandwich or brushing your teeth or washing your hair. You could discuss the importance of having them in order to create the end result. Another activity could be to listen to Australian folk songs that tell a story and ask questions about the sequence of events. A good example could be Waltzing Matilda and ask the questions such as, what was the swagman doing just before the jumbuck came to drink at the billabong? What happened after the troopers arrived? Other examples of this you could uh, use could be the wild colonial boy, the wild rover, bold Tommy Payne and red back on the toilet seat. They all have good little stories that you could use as examples for this activity. They also may like to suggest songs themselves to use as examples. Uh, popular songs would be fine, I'm sure they'd love doing that. A variation on this idea could also be for students to choose a song and design a story map of the events in order. So it is a pictorial representation of the story. We'll move on to the final inferential comprehension skill, inferring the author's feelings about the text. So inferring an author's feelings means determining how an author feels about the text they have written. It's an important skill because it helps students understand why the author wrote the text and what message they are trying to convey to the reader. So an example of an activity for this would be to study character depictions in popular books and how the author has inferred an opinion about something without stating it explicitly. For example, in Harry Potter you could ask how do you think J.K. Rowling and Harry Potter feels about Mr. and Mrs. Dursley? And what about how they treat their spoilt son, Dudley, compared to Harry? Another example could be to use poetry to study how an author feels about a predominant theme being conveyed in the text. For example, Mulga Bill's Bicycle by Banjo Patterson. How do you think the author felt about people who brag about their skills? A further activity could be to discuss with students how different people see the same event from different perspectives. So in small groups, students could write a short paragraph how they would perceive a day of heavy rain, for example, through the eyes of a farmer who's experiencing a devastating drought, a person who can see the local river rising, a child who has planned an outdoor birthday party, a bride and groom on their wedding day, or students who have got their school sports that day. And a final activity for inferring the author's feelings about the text could be that students read an appropriate selection of letters to the editor from the local newspaper and ask them to determine the subject of the letter and then identify how the author is feeling about the subject of their letter. So in conclusion, building your students' inferential comprehension skills is essential in empowering them to become critical thinkers about the text they read and then to make informed judgments about the information found in the text. We'll be sending through a list of ZipTales materials that can help you teach the skills covered in this webinar. Also, the content of this webinar covers just one aspect of the upcoming NAPLAN testing. ZipTales offers a range of learning resources dedicated to NAPLAN preparation, such as SAM and NAPLAN emulator. These resources are all available when you log into your ZipTales account. Is that right, Richard? 
Yes, that's right, Jane. And if you're not already a member of ZipTales and would like to learn more about our online learning library for schools, just go to www.ziptales.com to sign up for a 30-day free account for your entire school or follow a link in the chat window of this webinar. Now, Jane will be hanging around for the next 10 minutes to answer any further questions you may have around this subject. Again, I invite you to ask any questions using the chat box. Hi there everyone, uh, Richard again. Uh, look, I hope that's been of use to you. And now we're going to the question and answer session. Uh, now, I think if I could ask Jane, first of all, to maybe talk about um, the whole idea and particularly with reference to NAPLAN. So if she begins with an example of that kind, let's, let's, talk, let's talk about inferential regarding in, in, in the NAPLAN test. Jane? Thanks, Richard. Just having a look through one of the NAPLAN tests here as an example, and I think it's from last year's test, there was a sample text called The Best Teacher, and we've located a few questions here that direct relate, that relate directly to inferential comprehension skills that were discussed in the webinar. Uh, for example, with The Best Teacher, one of the questions in the NAPLAN test was, what did the boy do first when the cart broke? So that's a direct relation to a uh, sequence of events. So that's something that uh, we have talked about in the webinar as far as asking the children to locate when events happen within a text. Another question that is directly related to this text was the question, what is the main message of this story? So obviously that's referring to the main idea of the text. Uh, obviously in the NAPLAN test they give them four options to choose the best one and you might like to use this, uh, you could use uh, sample tests from years past uh, for the children to really get their heads around finding the main message in a story. And it really does help when they have got examples of different main messages and then it's great to discuss that as a class as well. And also another question with regard to our inferential comprehension skills was one on interpreting ideas and um, that was a question about in the best teacher they talk about how uh, necessity really is the best teacher and the children in the test have to give a reason for their answer about why uh, did the father really know a person called necessity that's just part of what the text is about and the, the, ch uh, the children really need to interpret that idea as far as uh, giving their own take on their understanding of that question so that's just a, a few examples of uh, what we've found in NAPLAN tests. And as I said, it's a great idea just to give children uh, exposure to these types of questions because that's what they'll be facing in the NAPLAN tests in, in year three and five. Thanks very much, Jane. That's great. Now, we've had a number of questions from uh, participants in the seminar, but regrettably, we're going to have to be um, choosy because we won't have enough time to go through them all. Perhaps if we could start with a couple, though. One of them, uh, Susan from Melbourne said, is summarising or note-taking a useful way of getting children to identify the main idea. Jane? Look, yes, I think that's a great idea, especially for information texts and persuasive texts as well. Uh, as I said in the webinar, it's great to for children to take notes, especially in regard to supporting details and how the supporting details uh, refer to the actual main idea of the text. So you can often talk about what details are coming out in this information text or persuasive text but more for if you're looking at imaginative texts i'd probably stick to taking a general synopsis of the story rather than taking notes it's, it's often quite sometimes the main idea can be quite subjective and you need to really uh, have a good look at the whole uh, story before you get that that uh, moral of the story story so to speak so I, I would recommend note taking for information text, not so much maybe uh, the imaginative. Good. Thanks, Jane. Another question is from Jan in Queensland. What's an example of positive and negative effect? Right. So if you're looking at uh, cause and effect, and uh, as I suppose Jan's making reference to the fishbone diagram, where we're looking at uh, different causes and how they can have positive and negative effects. And one of the examples I gave was um, wearing uniforms to school. So uh, students often have quite a lot of fun with this about talking about how 
wearing uniforms, what, what, what are the positive effects of this? I mean, uh, often the, the positive effects could be that uh, wearing uniforms, you, it, you often don't have to really choose what you're wearing every morning. You just don't even have to think about picking out an outfit or looking cool or whatever. And as for uh, the negative effects, it could be that it really stifles a child's individuality or, or different things like that. So it, it's good to look at uh, positive and ne negative effects of different causes. And this just helps the children then identify uh, cause and effect when they're reading texts, particularly uh, things like persuasive texts. Thanks, Jane. Look, another question, I think it might be the last one we have time for. Fran from South Australia says, how can I emphasise the importance of facts but also encourage children not to be scared of sharing their opinions? Jane? Yes, look, I think it's uh, very important for students to understand that facts are very important when you're, they're trying to inform your opinion. So it's great for students to express their opinions, which they do very well quite a lot of the time. But it's, uh, it's also very important for them to know that facts are something which are really the anchor of what does uh, inform us and what makes our opinions. So, so it is uh, very important to emphasise facts. But encouraging the opinions to be shared is also fantastic because then obviously they can base their own opinions on what factual knowledge they get from a text. Thanks very much, Jane. Look, I think that's all we have time for in, t in t terms of questions, but a couple of quick comments, uh, everyone. Um, we will be uh, making available a PD certificate to all participants. Uh, it's just a matter of replying to the email we have sent or are sending uh, to you, and we'll give you a customised PD certificate which maps it to the, uh, the national, national standards. Uh, that's the first thing. Uh, the, a recording of the webinar will be available. So if you didn't quite get it all or your notes weren't sufficient, you will have access to that. Uh, we'll be sending a link tomorrow, I think it is. There will also be an add-on resource list, so two pages of specifics that will map to the things Jane's been talking about, and we will send that out to all participants too. Two other quick ones. Uh, Sam is mentioned. Uh, she mentioned Sam. Sam. Sam is our NAPLAN emulation standardized assessment measure is what it stands for and that's a NAPLAN like test which you I hope know about on ZipTales. Um, so that's that's the second last thing and the last thing I'd like to say is that because NAPLAN is so much in the news and everyone's thinking about it at the moment we have produced uh, have already produced a persuasive lesson a lesson on persuasive writing for children um, targeted I suppose to the NAPLAN really and it consists of a lesson on how to write persuasively and a sample, a full answer as a sample, and those two will be made available to you. It's, it's an add-on. It's not quite the same thing, but it's, it's uh, something we thought we'd add in as a, as a bonus, if you like. Um, and finally, a number of people have asked, is there a transcript of the presentation? And yes, the, the answer is we will, in fact, be... No, tra no, sorry, not a transcript, but a, a recording of it, pardon me. There will be a recording of it, certainly. Okay, well, look, I think uh, we've just about run out of time. Uh, so I'd like to say thank you very much to Jane for doing the presentation. Uh, thanks very much, Jane. Thanks, Richard. It's been a pleasure. And to everyone who's come on board for this, uh, this webinar throughout Australia, all, all states are represented and lots, lots of teachers are listening in. So thanks for your time. We appreciate it. We, we think it's good of you to do it and we hope it's been of use to you. So thanks to everyone and uh, we wish you all the very best. Thank you and goodbye.